farmers to hairdressers, vendors, and many more. Many Jamaicans are losing money with no end in sight. Later in the program, we'll be hearing from financial and business experts. In this segment of the program, we have with us the Finance Minister, Dr. Nigel Clark. He'll be taking your questions, and he recently announced a stimulus package. Now, here are some of the main points of that. There is going to be a program called the Business Employee Support and Transfer of Cash, Best Cash, which will involve the temporary cash transfer to businesses licensed with the Jamaica Tourist Board. There's also going to be the Set Cash Program, which will include temporary cash transfers to individuals who can prove that they lost their job after March 10 as a result of COVID-19. There are going to be grants for marginally self-employed and informally employed persons. There will also be COVID path grants, as well as small business grants, one-time grants, those will be of $100,000. There'll be tourism grants, as well as compassionate grants. Now, some of those details will come out over the course of the question and answer period here for you. Dr. Nigel Clark, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me, Diane. Well, we're going to start off right with questions from the public. Here's a video question. Dr. Clark, right. I would like to know as a driver, like me, as a normal driver, which I have a truck for your company. All right. Me, me, I know me, a private company. So I wonder when this thing locked down, how I can survive. And that's what we're hearing from more and more people. Let me just remind our viewers, 3810072. That's our text line and our WhatsApp line, 3810072. Okay, Dan. So we have our program. It's called the, the COVID Allocation of Resources for Employees Program, the CARE Program. Uh, the government is uh, responding to this very unusual uh, crisis. Uh, where the economy is brought to a standstill in order to contain the effects of this very deadly virus and transferring uh, cash on a temporary basis to persons who are affected, going after the most vulnerable first, their, you know, entities for whom revenue has literally grown to zero uh, and there are others for whom the losses are you know, a matter of, of degree. I mean, certainly the government is facing losses, businesses and households. With respect to the... Uh, I just wanted to um, just share with your listeners that... I, I tell you what, yeah. I, I, I know we'll get to those, but yeah. if we could just do one at a time in terms of answering the questions, and then I think that will unfold uh, as you are answering Sure, so I was going to bring up one. Right. So, so what we have is, and forgive me for... So this um, is for the gentleman who was in that particular situation. Right, so we have uh, two programs that I want to share. And I don't, you know, two that I don't want to share. The f one of those is the COVID-19 general grant program. And this will apply to a lot of uh, self-employed persons. Like our taxi drivers. Who are uh, taxi drivers who uh, work as hairdressers or as barbers or as uh, you know, bar operators, uh, as beauty technicians, and of course, craft vendors, market vendors, and the persons involved in the, in the Juta Maxi, I call the transportation for tourists. We have a general uh, grant process. How where, do you qualify okay. though? Because I know you were stressing that these are the, a lot of this money is for people who have been paying taxes yes. and who have been following the rules. Right. So what would somebody have to do to be able to say a taxi driver? How could he access? Right. So what we are we're, what we're going to do for in terms of the general grant, we want to we have to just verify because anybody could say they're a taxi man or anybody could say they're a hairdresser. So we just have to verify versus a registration list. As far as taxes are concerned, they are registered, I believe, with the Transport Authority. Uh, Juta and Maxi and Jekal are registered as well with the tourism equivalent. So if you run a robot illegally, this is not for if you. If you run a robot illegally, unfortunately, no, this would not be f for you. But for persons who are registered, and, and not because we don't believe people are needing, but because the ability to verify doesn't okay. exist. And what we don't want is to have a system where people can make things up and say, I am a taxi driver, when indeed they were not taxi drivers. Okay, well, let's go to another question, because I know we have a lot of people in the same situation. Can we go to another question now? 
Finance Minister will ask a question like this. With the impending lockdown of Jamaica, which is where it looks like it's going go, what is the plan for the people, them, the day-to-day -day people, them, for survival for the day-to-day -day people? Them, with the cutting off of the tourism, tourism, industry, industry, tourism industry and the cutting off of the remittance, how the day-to-day -day people are going to survive? Yeah, so that, that, that is, uh, so some of the people that he would refer to would qualify under the general grant program. Those tend to be, you know, skilled persons who have a trade and they're registered with a municipal organization or with a national organization. So a vendor then who is in so, the market, so registered. A vendor who is registered. So the vendor has to pay a stall fee to the yes. municipal organization. So the vendor is known to the municipality. Those who are registered and <clears throat> who identity we can verify they will be entitled to or qualify for a grant. Similarly, the craft vendors, there are about 1,500 craft vendors in Jamaica who operate on the North Coast and in Negril as well. And those persons who are registered, they will qualify for a grant. For the proverbial, that questioner asked about the, the sort of man in the street, the person who uh, is not necessarily attached in that way. And we are going to have a, a program, which should be a smaller amount um, just a, a, a very small uh, grant that sort of recognizes that people are hard hit, a compassionate grant where uh, persons would apply and set out their circumstances and we just have a, a compassionate grant of, uh, of $10,000 that anybody can apply to. However, they can't have benefited under another program. So we'll have TRNs. To apply for this, you have to submit your TRN your, and, and, and other identification details. And as long as you have not qualified under one of the other programs and received the benefit, so there's no double dip. This is genuinely for people. You remember we have programs going and through the Member of Parliament. Yes, and ju just to be clear, yeah. the general grant, what's a grant? How much you get under the okay, general the, okay. grant? For program. the general grant, we are still just adding up all of the numbers of the number of barbers, the number of hairdressers, the number of taximen, the number of, and until that process, that data gathering from the entities that register these occupations is completed, we won't be able to f set the number. By, but okay. by the beginning of next week, we'll have that number out. Okay, but okay? you're saying this now, this is ten, so this, this is, is a $10,000 10, one-off. This is a $10,000 one-off. Okay. And this is for the, you know, the, the person who, <coughs> is not in any of the other categories. Okay. Remember, we now, have people... If somebody said to you about Dr. Clark, man, that can't pay me light bill. Well, what we're saying here is that we have many categories that are targeted. We have people on PATH who will be receiving an three payments instead of two payments. We have the general grant for people in trades who are affected. We have the small business grant of 100000 for people who are paying taxes. We have the SEP grant and the best cash grant. Okay. And we have two hundred million, one hundred eighty. $189 million going through the 63 members of parliament uh, for them to, and $189 million can reach uh, 5,000 people very easily or 6,000 people. Poor. So we're saying if you have not, if all of those programs and you have not been able to benefit, you have not been able to get anything from any of those programs, we have a compassionate grant that you can apply to and receive Got you. a $10,000 uh, transfer. Let's go to a question from Tracy Ann. Tracy Ann has a question. And Tracy Ann is saying, I'm self-employed. I'm a hairdresser from the outbreak. I've only got one hair to do. I had a shop of rent. I have to close it down. I have a loan to pay. And they just call me and say, I have to pay 30000 for by tomorrow. I don't have the first dollar. I don't know what to do. So, I mean, yes. whole heap mix up there. Yes. So the good news for, for her... Not, for t not by tomorrow, though. The, well, not by tomorrow, because we have to have, you know, not by tomorrow, but soon enough. The, as I said, the general grant, as, she a, would as a hairdra for the hairdresser, grant. she would qualify for this. Uh, she would fill out, it would be online. She, go, she would go online and she would fill out the application online, provide the details that are required, provide her banking information. And for those who do not have uh, bank accounts, we're going to have... Uh, we're going to have the option of them receiving the transfer via a remittance company. Let me ask you, though, because she made, she made mention here of something. I know a lot of people have this problem. She said, I have a loan to pay. Now, is any consideration, to your knowledge, being given to the financial institutions, whether people can defer, delay loan payments? Okay, so let's just talk about the loan payments that the government is in responsible for. 
The government has a national housing trust that has extended mortgages to many Jamaicans. The Prime Minister would have announced in his budget presentation that the interest rates on those loans are being reduced. As far as student loans are concerned, uh, for persons, young graduates who have student loans, I announced in my closing budget presentation that loan payments will be deferred. And so for the months of April, May, and June, loan payments, principal and interest, that would ordinarily be due will not be due until July. With respect to private sector loans, we have been working with the financial institutions, uh, encouraging them to engage with their customers, both their retail, individual, personal customers, and their business and corporate customers to advance new loans where, they, those may be, where that may be required, uh, waive fees where that might be helpful, defer principal and interest payments. Are you getting and, traction? And we're getting traction. And the, I've just spoken to borrowers who have told me that banks are, have approached them with such potential solutions. As you can imagine, I think the... <clears throat> Uh, the banks are approaching it on a case-by-case -case basis, meaning that, you know, not everybody okay. needs it, so but Tracy for those who need it, uh, I'd say go and talk to your uh, bank Tracy, about that. Tracy, I should go that. and talk to our bank and see if they can. Yes, but she, Tracy must apply for the general grant when it comes out. Okay, yeah. so apply for the general grant yes. and then see if your, your financial institution will give you a break. We're going to go to the break. We'll be back with our TBJ Town Hall. We're back with the Finance Minister. Remember our text and WhatsApp line. It's 3810072. Back in a moment. Thank you so much for staying with us for this RGR Gleaner Group Town Hall. We're looking at the economy and specifically we're asking how do we get through this very difficult period of this COVID-19 outbreak from a financial point of view, from an economic point of view. And the finance minister is still with us, Dr. Nigel Clark, answering your questions. Let's go to another question. Because I'm a fitness trainer and I'm a massage therapist and all those all those sectors are closed as we speak. You, all parks are closed and you can't gather more than 10 persons. No, I don't hear any mention of that. Also, I have, I have more to feed. And you mentioned about part program. I am, none of my children are on the part program. But that, what are we getting to subsidize so, our loss? Yes. Yes, so, I mean, again, what we'd have is under the general uh, grant program. And, and there, what the, the principle behind that uh, is that the, by the, the conditions that the government has laid down to contain the spread of the virus, uh, we want to 
assist the businesses that are directly affected. There are people who are indirectly affected. All of us are affected to some extent. And certainly, you know, we have said to our beauty parlors and our uh, barbers and our hairdressers and our gyms uh, to lower the pace of activity. So we want to try and, and help under the general grant program. Yeah. A lot of gyms have already just closed, though. Yes. I, I'm a, because so few people so are few going. People have come in, yeah. Are you making it sound a little too simple, though, Dr. Clark? No. Because a lot of these programs, um, people have tried to access various assistance programs in the past, and they get tied up with red tape. And as I said, I go back to the point that you stressed in your budget presentation that these are for people who play by the rules. And a lot of our people are in the informal sector, you know. So. Yeah. So when I, when I spoke, I, I gave a lot of um, attention to the Best Cash and the Set Cash program, which are our programs for the formal sector. Um, uh, and it was important Businesses for, filing taxes. Yes, businesses filing taxes and the registered. evidence is there and registered and so on. And uh, it was necessary to, to do so because the, the entities that were hit first and hit hardest certainly were the ones in the tourism sector and so forth. And a lot of those entities would qualify under the best cash and the set cash. But as I, in the response to the previous question, I've outlined for you that we have uh, the general grant program, which is going to be uh, simple to fill out. It's going to be online and it should take, as long as you have your information, you have your TRN, you have whatever registration number you're required to have, um, then it should take uh, five minutes to fill out, maybe 10, not, not more than that. Just a few uh, questions. Press send, and as long as your information is accurate, uh, then it will be processed, and at the, by the end of the month, you would receive the, the transfer. Let, let me ask you, though, because let's accept as a given that something is better than nothing, yeah. and that it must be a good thing that we're in a position to assist at all. But again, having said that, if you, if you drill down to an individual level, a, a small business is a business that has less than uh, well, a small 500 employees. No, 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 no. Small business, small business has sales less than 50 million. There you go. And has, you know, a few employees. Right. Yeah. So, but when you say that, for instance, a business can get a one-off um, cash payment of $100,000, mm -hmm. that's maybe one bill mm -hmm. out of one month for a company that's going to be looking at perhaps three, four, five months of downturn in the long term, how much impact do you really think well, these assistance programs the end, will a have? Small business in Jamaica has, I don't think, sort of all small businesses, just indiscriminately, once you're a small business, a grant of 100,000, that's never happened in the 57 year history of Jamaica. So let's acknowledge so that. So that is uh, that let's moving, that, yes. you know, but in terms of helping me keep my head above water, it might help for another couple of days or another week or two. But in the long term, is this really but, but, going to help businesses remain afloat? Well, what are we, what are we trying to do? We're, we're trying to preserve the productive capacity of the economy because this is a temporary uh, shock. By temporary, we don't know if it's temp, you know, the grinding economic activity to a halt. We don't know if it's two weeks, three weeks, six weeks, 12 weeks. Okay, but it is temporary in nature. And we want to be able to preserve the productive capacity so that when this recedes, when this goes away, when we overcome the health aspect of it, uh, these businesses can thrive once more and respond. So the idea here is not to replace people's profits or subsidize profits. It's simply to do what you just described, to pay a very important bill that may become due or purchase something that is critical to the, in terms of the small business, critical to maintaining that productive capacity in the Jamaican economy. Let's go back to our questions from members of the public. We have a question up, I think, from Christine. Christine says, if the worst comes to Jamaica, what mechanism will be in place to assist employees who are laid off if financial assistance is given by the government for how long? Well, so our program, the CARE program that we've announced, uh, the CARE program is for three months, for April, May, and June. Uh, clearly, we have considered, you know, what happens if the situation is no better. And uh, therefore, the levels have to be, you know, has to be set at levels that if we may need to go another month, then we are in a capacity to do so. 
but our commitment is for April, May, and June. Uh, optimistically, we are hoping that the world, especially the United States, who is a major trading partner of Jamaica, our largest source of imports, our largest source of exports, our largest source of tourism, of tourists, that you know, a lot, the time frame of this containment and of this suspension of economic activity depends in large part on how long the United States takes to get it under control. But the whole idea here, because you mentioned April, May and June, so mm -hmm. if somebody has been laid off and can prove that that layoff was a result of COVID-19 yes. since March 10, yes. they would qualify. Yes. And it's 9,000 every fortnight, is yeah. that correct? Correct. Tell me something. As long as they're earning less than one and a half million. Right? Okay. So it's April, May and June. So it's three months. Yes. But suppose for argument's sake, boy, I had savings and I could go through April and then I apply in May, do I still get three months, May, well, June, for July? The, you, you talk about simplicity and don't, not have any red tape. To make the thing simple, we're saying that you get from the month of your application forward. Ah. So if you apply in April, you get April, May, June. If you okay. apply in May, you get May and June. Okay. okay? So, so it's to, cutting off at this point. It's cutting off in June. Yes, it's coming So if I want the three months, I better hurry up and apply, apply now. now. Apply now. Applications open April 9th. Right. The uh, website will be up, and you just go to the website. You choose the category that applies to you. There are seven different programs. The website will have the information on it. You choose the category that applies to you. You fill in the detail. You press uh, enter or send, as the case may be, and that's it. Is this the one that depends on your employer? Submitting right. the so P45? Yes. So, they, so we have, that's, a, that's a set cash program. Right? And under the set cash program, if you're laid off and, or made redundant or terminated, and regardless of the industry in which you operate in Jamaica, as long as that happened after the 10th of March and before the 30th of June, you go onto the website, you fill out your details, including your TRN, the name of your employer, etc., and we will be in touch with the employer and they will evidence or confirm your, lay, lay, your employment status. So it won't depend on them because suppose, need, suppose my a, boss didn't like me and care what I send in the P45. Okay. At the end of the day, Dion, we're spending taxpayers' money, we're spending your money, we're spending the money of the, your viewers and everybody whose money we are spending wants to know for sure, right, that everybody who gets it is deserving. So we have to have a double verification. For the, okay. for the set cash, is a, is a double so the verification. the employee has to verify. Yes. We have to verify that you were employed, and we can easily do that. Okay. And we have to verify that you were terminated. So All the right. employer will upload a P45, which verifies that you were indeed terminated. Okay. So employers, please do that. In the meantime, let's go to another video question. Business slow down, school closed, so we don't have much supporters to come and buy the stock so some of the things going to perish out and stuff like that so what's going to take place after all this now i know you have different sectors working together so of course you have the agriculture we yeah. were speaking with the farmers representatives a little bit earlier but i know you also announced a farmers relief yes. package so we're going that to applies to yes so for farmers a special case we are we're going to be transferring $200 million to the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries specifically for farmers. And the, that, that ministry will detail exactly how they're going to deploy those funds. But in my discussions with Ministers Shaw uh, and Minister um, Hutchinson and Minister Green, uh, one of the thoughts is to potentially you know, purchase crop that has been harvested and was intended for the tourism industry and make that available through NGOs to the persons who are in need. But there are other ways of using those funds as well to intervene. The point is that $200 million of value will be transferred to our uh, small farmers who could be affected by COVID-19. Okay, I think that lady is a vendor who buys from farmers. So oh, she was, right, so she was saying they have a lot of produce and worried it's going to spoil. Yes, so for the, for the vendors, I mentioned earlier that under the general grant program, that our vendors, uh, market vendors, will be able to apply and get relief. And in the event that she's a vendor and she doesn't qualify under the market vendor program because she's not in a, a, a stall that is administered by the municipality, she's not at Coronation Market or in any of the markets that are administered by the municipal corporation, then you know, she would have the general grant that she could apply to, which is a, which is a, a smaller amount because we expect the base to be a lot wider. 
um, but there's something in there for, for everybody. So what's going to be the verification program for those? Well, and that is why we're keeping that to, to 10. The verification there is going to be, the persons are going to have to submit their details, their name, TRN, and identification details, as well as their income and something about their circumstances. Right. The first bit of verification is that we will run that TRN against the TRNs of all the people who have benefited before. Or if the person benefits under this program we, and they apply for another one, they won't get through. All right, let me okay. try and squeeze in one last question before we go to our other break. I'm a farmer. What about uh, our produce if the country should lock down? What would happen to our produce? Where would we get um, market? Because the market alone cannot angle the produce. Right, so yes. she's stepping it up there now, yes. say. Yes, yes. So, so, you know, the Minister Shaw, I know, Mr. Hutchins are very concerned about uh, that kind of situation. I've had conversation with them. They've represented the views of those farmers to me. And as I said, one of the things that's being considered is that the resources that we're providing to that ministry, to the Ministry of uh, Agriculture, uh, could be used to, to, just buy to the purchase produce. the produce. Yes, purchase the produce. So you get a double benefit. You purchase the produce, and then you give it to people who need it, right? Okay. Or you give it to NGOs or shelters or homes. And so that is what uh, we're looking at. But wait on details from the Ministry of Agriculture on that. All right. Well, let's take a break, and we come back. Remember, our hashtag is TVJ Town Hall. Back in a moment. People kind of scared. So it can have it away, you understand? Lack of employment can have it away. So the farm can have breathe in a bad situation right now. This is a cucumber alone, I me last about $400,000. Just this is a half year of cucumber. About $400,000 I go last. But what I go do? Nobody now buy it. The first set of hotel were locked down. My boss don't come back from that. And that's about two weeks ago. Jamaicans are feeling the financial fallout from COVID-19. Right in my pocket week right now. Who gonna compensate us for some of the losses? The government is responding. We care and help is on the way. But just who will benefit from this help? Join us for COVID-19 and the economy on Monday, March 30 at 8.30 p.m. Send your questions to 876-381-0072 or at Television Jam on Twitter or Television Jamaica on Facebook. That's COVID-19 and the economy, a digital town hall. So it can have it away, you understand? Lack of employment can have it away. So the farm can have breathe in a bad situation right now. This is a cucumber alone, I last about $400,000. Just this is a half year of cucumber. About $400,000 I go last. But what I go do? Nobody now buy it. The first set of hotel were locked down. My boss don't come back from that. And that's about two weeks ago. Thank you so much for staying with us for this RGR Gleaner Group Town Hall, looking at the economy and COVID-19, how we're being affected and how we can survive and move through this. Let me um, go to a question from Twitter. Andre on Twitter says, or is asking, how can the proposed care package possibly assist vulnerable tertiary students? Are they anywhere in the mix? Okay, so we are, as I mentioned to you, we're on the student loan, we're deferring uh, the principal and interest payments over April, May, and June. Um, it, with respect to people who are in school at the moment, um, well, we are, you know, anybody is eligible to apply for the compassionate grant as long as they're over 18 years old. So to the extent that, you know, this particular circumstance that a student has, they're eligible to apply for, let's put it up, for the, for the compassionate grant, which is the, you know, the, the base of it all. Um, so this is something that people will be eligible for. 
Okay, I have a number of questions I know on, for pensioners. I want to make sure, and, and the vulnerable, and I want to make sure we get those in. So I have a question. So let me go to one of our video questions. My question is, the, the elderly that's shut in because of the restrictions, the age restrictions, how do they get their food? How do they get funds? Okay, that's one. Well, let me let you answer that and then I go to Maureen. Okay, I'll answer that. In, there are two ways that that can happen. Um, or not, I mean, not only two, there, there are three. We have, for the elderly who are, you know, in infirmaries, for example, we have transferred, a, we will be transferring $150 million to the Ministry of Local Government to uh, come to the aid of the elderly in infirmaries with food and medicine and hygiene products. We will be transferring $189 million to 63 members of parliament and the Prime Minister has written to each member of parliament with the instructions that these funds, which will be $3 million per constituency, $2 million of it is to be used to provide the vulnerable, of which the elderly is a major category, with food, medicine and supplies. So persons can contact their constituency representatives, their member parliaments uh, in that regard. And then the, the, the third is that under the compassionate grant, and that's why we have the compassionate grant, right? Because there are many people who are not in the uh, occupational groups, you know, students being one and the elderly being another. They can apply uh, for, for a compassionate, compassionate grant, which would be sent directly to them if they have a bank account, or if not, would be sent to a, a remittance company for them to collect. Okay, and then government pensioners, so no. So I have Maureen who says, what about the pensioners? I'm not sure whether she means NIS or government, but she says, couldn't they give us a one-off payment for April to help during the crisis, not our regular payments, one of those packages they announced for COVID. And then I have Joyce Lynn who says, my concern is for we pensioners that I heard nothing mentioned. Yes, NIS pensioners will get something, but government pensioners I heard nothing about. Okay, so I'd say two things with respect to pensioners. The first is that we, uh, we waive the requirement for life certificates to be produced for the June payment. Ordinarily, pensioners would have to produce a life certificate signed by a justice of the peace, bring it into the accountant general to ensure that it be paid for June. And they would have had to do that by the 20th of April, I believe. That requirement has been waived and the payment for, for June and for May will happen as without that being fulfilled. Uh, so the, that's a matter the, of convenience though, that's not really a financial benefit. The second thing that I mentioned is that in the budget that was just passed, we have $600 million that was approved for an increase to government pensioners. One of the things that we could certainly do is to bring that increase forward. Normally that increase would be made much later in the year. We could uh, bring that forward and apply that increase you know, during this period of time. So is that something that you are actively considering or you just thought about having heard my questions from no, Maureen no, no, and no, Joyce? No, the Prime Minister has been very, very keen on making sure the elderly are uh, protected. Um, he had a town hall on the elderly and you know, I, it's not something I had uh, announced uh, before our program, but it's something that's been under active consideration. And the way in which we do those increases as well can take into account the specific circumstances that we face under this COVID threat. Okay, let's go to another video question. I'm a security, but I'm a little bit over 65. And we notice that you say people are from 65 going to 75 or so. We should stay at home. But because we are not registered under the Security Act, if I stay home, sir, or oh, would my financially uh, dip things be paid? Yeah, so he's saying you all tell him to stay thing. home. Yes. But if he stay home, he can't earn. Yeah, and that is why we're going to, we're going to try th this compassionate ground that I've mentioned. You know, we are, I'm, and he asked a similar question to what was asked before. So I'm giving a similar response. That for $10,000. No, so. wait, 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 let me finish. Mm -hmm. So we, we, not everybody wants to get benefits through their member of parliament. There are some people who are comfortable with that and others who aren't. But the member of parliament will each have uh, an amount of $2 million that they can, uh, that they're, they have been uh, mandated 
to purchase food, medicine, and hygiene products for it their constituents. It won't be cash. I won't be able to no, get cash. Not from cash from the member of parliament. No, it will be uh, care packages and products. And you're going to see those are going to be, I believe, uh, later this week, beginning of next week. We're going to have those being rolled out across. As a member of parliament, for example, and my constituents are uh, probably watching your show, I will be, you know, using that to roll out, you know, 300 or 400 between 200 and 400 care packages across the constituency and uh, for elderly persons uh, primarily and other vulnerable uh, individuals. That, that's not this gentleman though. This is a working no, so, man. Yes, that's not this gentleman. Right. So I was telling you one. So that's, that's one uh, program. And, I'm, and the other program for people who are not even, you know, are, are more vulnerable than what I just described, are in infirmaries, the Ministry of Local Government will have $150 million to buy food and medicine uh, and other consumables for that group. And I was saying that we have the, uh, the compassionate grant uh, for individuals to apply to. And bear in mind that the, you know, the, that order was given last week. We're not sure how long it's going to last. It may not you know, be as, uh, as damaging as what the, the Juta driver would fa face is where we don't know when the tourists are coming back. So it, you know, it's been scaled to take account of the relativities, but the good news for that gentleman is he can stay in his home and he can, perch, he can apply online in the comfort of his living room or his bedroom, apply online for a COVID-19 compassionate, COVID compassionate oh, grant $10, and so. receive that in his bank account. Suppose he doesn't have internet at home. He can use his mobile phone and use GPRS. He can what? He can use his mobile phone. It, it will be accessible on mobile phone. Okay. Yeah. If he has a smartphone. Well, you know, these days, I know something about mobile phones, and these days the vast majority of phones that are sold have some smart features on them. Critical question, though, in terms of timeliness of payout. Yes. So if I apply for any of these grants, what are you thinking of in terms of how quickly I get the money? Okay. So what we're thinking of, applications and... Just for your you know, viewers, that this, this, we don't, this infrastructure does not exist. We are putting in place this infrastructure in a rapid response to what we're experiencing in Jamaica and what the world is experiencing. So we have our fellow Jamaicans who work for the Ministry of Finance, for the Accountant General's Department, for eGov, for Taxation Jamaica, who are working day and night uh, and have been over the past few weeks to put in place this online infrastructure. April 9th is going to go live and persons are going to be able to apply. We, as you can imagine, we need to have a cutoff point for April payments because the payments have to be processed. So we'll you hope accumulate... To be paying in April? Yes, we, we hope that the, the payment, not hope, we intend for the payments to begin in April. So certainly under the best cash, the set cash, the, uh, the, and the grant programs that I've mentioned will begin uh, in April. Okay, so, for, so then for any given time period then, you're saying you should expect within a month? Without yes, a any, any given time period, you should expect that within a month. Yes. You can get payment. Correct. Okay, and in terms of getting more information, where can people get more information? The, once the website is launched, the, all the information will be on the website, but we're coming up with a brochure later this week, which will be available on social media and we'll try and disseminate it as widely as possible. Uh, if we can afford it, we'll have it printed and included a, as a supplement uh, in the newspaper, if we can afford it. Oh, and, uh, and we'll try and disseminate that information as widely as possible so people know their options and know which program applies to them and what they're, you know, which program they're going to apply for. Okay, let's go to this other question now. Um, Keith Brown says, I'm a self-employed driving instructor. My tax is due. Can the penalty be waived or time given to pay? <laughs> so I would have announced in my closing budget pre presentation that for the period April to June, uh, you know, TAJ will not be initiating any new summonses. They'll send out reminder notices, so he'll get a reminder in the mail, but TAJ is not going to Enforce. hunt him down and seek to punish him. All right, I have to ask this question. 
Kimberly, as we talk about moving forward and looking beyond COVID, Kimberly is asking, after the epidemic has passed, what are the plans in place to get the country back on its feet? I love that question from Kimberly. I love that question. But I don't have a whole heap of time. Okay, because we have to look beyond the crisis. The idea behind our package, our care program, is to ameliorate and cushion the economic effect to the best uh, ability of the government. And it's the first time the government of Jamaica is able to respond in this way in a global economic shock. What we, need to, what we want to do is to make sure that we can come out of this strong. And that is why, if you, if you think about it, this tourism, shutting, the tourism down. shutting down is a major part. So we want to be in a position, and I'm working with Minister Bartlett on this, that the tourism industry can get back up very, very quickly. And that's why we, not, one of the programs that we didn't talk about was the, uh, the tourism grant program where we're providing you know, $1.2 billion of, in grants available for the small operators in tourism, whether they be hotels or attractions or tour operators or any other business in the tourism sector, to say, look, in addition to what your bank is doing for you, in addition to what you're doing for yourself, we're putting up grant money in place that you can use you can use it to you know, pay whatever lease payment you have, whatever maintenance program that you have to carry on over these three months to make sure that we are in a position. We want to be the first country in the Caribbean to be able to get back up, right? The, tourist, the J Jamaica Tourist Board has, I don't know if you've seen the videos that they have released playing in American media, reminding uh, the, the, the public, the tourist public, that Jamaica will be here after this crisis. Realistically, that's next year, though. We're going to take a big, big hit for the rest of yeah, this I don't, year. I, I don't expect that we're going to go, that tourism is going to return to the levels that it was in January by June or July. I think it's going to be, it's going to, you know, it's going to taper up. It's going to be gradual. But what we want to do, though, we want to be, we want to have the steepest gradient. We want to be the one that recovers f at a faster rate than other countries. And you know, with this care package, with transferring cash directly to individuals right. and businesses, we think we're putting ourselves in a good position to do that. And I then know. we lead off with a, you know, advertisement campaign and, and so forth Got as far you. as tourism is concerned. Got you. I know we're going to be talking about this much more in the yes, months ahead, but I'm going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank Finance you. Minister Dr. Nigel Clark, stay tuned. Expert guests will be joining us for the rest of the virtual tote hall, and they'll be taking your questions on business and finance, personal finance, all that stuff. Remember our text line, it's 3810072. That's 8763810072. Zero, zero, seven, two. And remember, our hashtag is TBJ Town Hall. Soon come. March 30 at 8.30 p.m. Live on TVJ, JNN, OneSpotMedia.com, Radio Jamaica 94 FM, Power 106 FM, The Gleaner Online, and all TVJ social media platforms. Jamaicans are feeling the financial fallout from COVID-19. Right in my pocket week right now. Who gonna compensate us for some of the losses? The government is responding. We care and help is on the way. But just who will benefit from this help? Join us for COVID-19 and the economy on Monday, March 30 at 8.30 p.m. Send your questions to 876-381-0072 or at Television Jam on Twitter or Television Jamaica on Facebook. That's COVID-19 and the Economy, a digital town hall, Monday, March 30 at 8.30 p.m. Live on TVJ, 
JNN, OneSpotMedia.com, Radio Jamaica 94 FM, Power 106 FM, The Gleaner Online, and all TVJ social media platforms. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Jamaicans are feeling the financial fallout from COVID-19. Right in my pocket week right now. Who gonna compensate us for some of the losses? The government is responding. We care and help is on the way. But just who will benefit from this help? Join us for COVID-19 and the economy on Monday, March 30 at 8.30 p.m. Send your questions to 876-381-0072 or at Television Jam on Twitter or Television Jamaica on Facebook. That's COVID-19 and the economy, a digital town hall, Monday, March 30 at 8.30 p.m. Live on TVJ, JNN, OneSpotMedia.com, Radio Jamaica 94 FM, Power 106 FM, The Gleaner Online and all TVJ social media platforms. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Jamaicans are feeling the financial fallout from COVID-19. Right in my pocket week right now. Who gonna compensate us for some of the losses? The government is responding. We care and help is on the way. But just who will benefit from this help? Join us for COVID-19 and the economy on Monday, March 30 at 8.30 p.m. Send your questions to 876-381-0072 or at Television Jam on Twitter or Television Jamaica on Facebook. That's COVID-19 and the economy, a digital town hall, Monday, March 30 at 8.30 p.m. Live on TVJ. JNN, OneSpotMedia.com, Radio Jamaica 94 FM, Power 106 FM, The Gleaner Online, and all.
And thank you so much for staying with us for the RGR Gleaner Group virtual town hall looking at the economy. So we're answering your questions on how do we get through this very difficult period. And just before we go back to our um, questions from you, we just want to remind everybody, effective April 1, there will be an all-island curfew. Curfew, people, not lockdown, not whole day, whole night lockdown. It's a curfew meaning the nighttime hours from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. you're supposed to be in your house initially for seven days. So that's from April 1, which is tomorrow. So please, please, it's not an all-island lockdown. It's an all-island nighttime curfew, April 1, which is Wednesday, I believe it begins. All right. So in this segment of the program, we continue to answer your questions, and we're very pleased to have with us Merrick Plummer. He's a vice president at SAGICOR. We also have with us Alison Peart, um, tax expert and financial consultant, and Dr. Kadamawe Knife, who wears lots of hats. He's from UAE, um, entrepreneurial expert and as well economy. So thank you all so very much. And let me start with that quote that we, we had on the screen from Marlene Street Forest of the Jamaica Stock Exchange, because people are panicking. People are panicking. People who spent the last two years happily checking their gains mm -hmm. every week on the stock exchange and seeing stocks go up and up and up and up are now seeing stocks going down and down and down and down and starting to say, hold on, should I put my money under my mattress? <laughs> Let me ask you first, Merrick Plummer. What's the answer to that? The answer, Dion, is that we want to encourage our investors to stay invested. Now, one of the things that whenever you're investing, you always start out with an investment objective. And that objective usually has a timeline on it. Yes, no. and my, my objective was to buy an IPO and double or triple my money in two weeks, which is what people have been doing. <laughs> right. What? Am I lying? <laughs> no, fortunately, over the two years, the most recent two years, Jamaicans would have enjoyed that, you know, that bump in the stock market. But the truth is our stock market generally does better than most other investment, but it does so over time, Dion. If you look at any stock market graph anywhere in the world, what you're going to see are some peaks and you will see some valleys. The truth is though, those, the peaks are usually higher than the last one. Mm. So what we encourage people to do is ride through the valley. Yes, it's some valley, sure don't this, this feel like a descent into hell? <laughs> uh, no, I don't <laughs> think so. Um, mankind has been through a lot of scenarios before. I know this one is fairly new because this one is, is attacking our most valuable asset, which is our health, but we've been through tougher times. Yeah, Alison Peart, you want to add to that? Well, you know, one of the things that I find interesting, everybody really looks at the stock exchange when it does well. Yes. I remember in 02, 03, yes. 04, 05, 06, 08, when people paid no attention to our stock market. I mean, Marlene and, and Neville Ying, they were running around trying to do the, get this, this thing going. And then it took off. My view if you had good quality stocks before and you invested in them, you have yeah. good quality, quality stocks, stocks. now. Yeah. It's not the time to do a mass sell-off because you're gonna miss the upward trajectory. My view, start to look at the stock market and see if there's anything that you would want to buy. I never know when the bottom is. However, in times of crisis, you look for quality, and that is the time that you can probably afford it because, I mean, some of the prices that were there before. So mm -hmm. my view, now is the time if you have cash and if you have, you know, the wherewithal to stay calm and not look at it every day and have a heart attack. Because <laughs> if you do that, it's like I'm watching the news. I'm seeing somebody's face as you Yes, it's, it's like watching the news with COVID. You know, you keep hearing the deaths, you keep hearing this, and we forget the humanity of all that and our mental stability in that. So when you look at the stock exchange, stability, look for quality. Yeah, that issue yes. of the long run, though, Doctor Knife, because yeah, a lot yes. of people weren't thinking long, long run for some of these stocks. So. But you know, the reality, though, in a crisis situation, if you look at how the determinants of demand for money, usually three things: the investment demand, which is by probably the stocks; precautionary demand, which means that just in case something happens, you need to have money; and a day-to-day -day transaction. Now, in a crisis situation, people want to be liquid because they want to have money so they can respond to any kind of changes. So. The average person who have this big income stream will probably want to transform this thing from stock into 
cash so he can respond to a crisis situation. So the precautionary, the just in case demand for money is going to be greater, and the day-to-day -day transaction demand for money is going to be greater. I think what is going to happen is that those who have enough money to spend, now that the stock prices are falling, they are going to buy, and therefore when things become stable and the prices start to increase again, they are going to make a lot of money. So usually in crisis, the persons who are poorest are the ones who tend to lose the most. So when we are hoping that they will be the poorer and the yeah. rich get richer. Exactly, yeah. that's what yeah. is going to happen. Because remember, now a man in low income do have a lot of money to save. Yeah. Stocks is a part of your, your saving. Yeah. And in a crisis, then you broke. That's why we have all these packages being mm -hmm. promoted now by the minister because they recognize that low income people would not have a lot of savings, but they need to still continue them transactions and them, them, them regular consumption. So the person who can have the longest view is the man who tends to have the most wealth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have a stock of wealth, you can have a long-term view. Mm -hmm. As they say, you're trying to buy some stocks so you can make a money in a two years. Because that's what, but the person who has large no, asset two, portfolio. Two weeks, you see, you know? <laughs> so, so the truth is, I'm, and, and Dr. Knife is right, um, a, a, lot of, a lot of our investors would have come into the stock market based on how well it was doing with mm -hmm. short-term expectations. Mm -hmm. But generally, it's not the market for that. It's more a long-term market. Mm -hmm. I'd want to say, though, to these newer investors that even though you see the stock price is declining now, mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. you make a sale or put in a sell order, you haven't lost. It's, you haven't lost. it's still a loss on, uh, on paper. So you haven't realized that loss yet. The, the truth is, though, I know there will be a need for some immediate cash. Mm -hmm. And what I would say to persons is, if there's any way, whether through Minister Clark's different um, cash, in, cash uh, grants that he has out there, or some other means that you can access funding to deal with those immediate needs that Dr. Knife mentioned, I would say leave your investments where they are. You know, History just, has shown that they will go back up. And just listen to what you're saying. It might have been a good innovation, though, if, if the minister could say to persons, if you have stocks out there, we could actually allow you to get funding using those stocks as some kind of collateral. Yeah, so you wouldn't have to run out there to try to sell mm -hmm. the stocks, too. Because, again, no, members say the stock market remains stable. It supports confidence in the broader in the economy. The economy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a strategy might have been to say, OK, if you have $10,000 worth of stocks, We'd be willing to Magic. let you get yeah. mm -hmm. five thousand a kind of almost like a soft loan, like a one percent, two percent interest, so you can actually deal with some of your immediate mm -hmm. demands. Okay. All right. Well, let's go back to questions. Well, go to questions. Let's start to take some of our questions now from our um, our, our viewers. So, okay. So let me ask a question in in terms of the business because we've been getting lots of questions about um, people who are bus in business or people who are retired as well mm -hmm. now the minister was speaking about what he needed to do in terms of you know small grants and so on but when you have a question coming from like new romantics who is saying what about government people whose pensions are delayed uh -huh. so so talk to me about what how, how s fixed income people who are in these very difficult situations, what do they do now? Who wants to take that very so difficult one, I you know? See? And, this, and this is what happens, because sometimes, as we say, Marco said, people hold themselves back against the wall, because some of these things we should have addressed from a, a long time ago in terms of the processes that allow people to get the money as, as quickly as they can. Mm -hmm. You know, the question is, is where? It's have to be families and friends who are in better positions. Yeah. You know, because the state, the minister just said that him have a compassionate grant, where him give you $10,000, $10,000, it's, it's good that I'm giving that. But then you ask him and I'm getting it. It's not tomorrow. What you need is today. Mm -hmm. So it's a support system, it's a support structure which is going to work now, you know. The question is, do you need money or do you need the things that money can buy? So if it's food you need the money for, do you have any kind of access to food? Most of we come from country, we don't come from mm -hmm. town. And therefore, we're going to start to appreciate more mm -hmm. the rural spaces that we come from. You know, we're lucky now, says fruit season, as I was saying in the discussion mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. When you go to the market, all kinds of fruits are there. So the question is, what do you need the money for? Mm -hmm. And people demand money now for essentials. And what is essential? Is it that prevent the disease? So people want a lot of, you know, um, 
things with toilets and for sanitation, but them also want food. Food is a fundamental concern. And while we're saying this thing about the food, you know, because it was also shown earlier in the program where the farmers have them cucumber and the cucumber not selling. So there's a distribution mm -hmm. challenge right, right yeah. there yeah. as well. How do we get the food from where it is to persons who need it? And it makes no sense. I'm saying to a farmer, go and plant the food, plant the food, plant the food. They can't get it into the mm -hmm. area where people need the food. So it's, and I'm not saying that's a problem. It's really an opportunity now to set those things correct. Mm -hmm. How do we support distribution process? That's why innovation is crucial. That's our mm -hmm. process innovation, mm -hmm. as well as some kind of product innovation. So there's no really short answer to that question. What I know is that the strength of your support structure, which means your family, your extended family, your friends who are in rural areas, mm -hmm. the crucial now to a lot of, of, of persons survive. I went to country what Saturday. So, so I'm so sorry, let me, let me just interrupt you for another question related to that. And let, let me ask you, Mr. Plummer, because if you're laid off at a time like this, what, what should you be thinking of? Christine is asking, if the worst comes to the worst, what about employees who are laid off? And again, we heard what the minister had to say mm -hmm. about financial assistance, but as, as Dr. Knife is saying, that's really going to go so far and no further. What other things should people be looking at doing if they're laid off? Right now, I would say that if you are, if you find in a yourself in a position where income is cut, because if your income is cut, it may not necessarily be that you are laid off, but it could be that you're working less hours. Mm -hmm. So therefore, an adjustment needs to be made in your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that adjustment starts with even your everyday expenses. Yeah, you know, the truth is, um, when you look at it, Dion, there are people out there who are surviving, for example, on $50,000 per week, but still there's somebody else out there surviving on $5,000 mm -hmm. per week. So I'm saying there is some capacity within what we are doing on a daily basis to adjust our, our, our mm -hmm. budget. And I think people have to realize that in these times, it calls for those kind of measures where you're adjusting, you're adjusting your budget. So instead of maybe two pounds of chicken that you would normally buy or two pounds of chicken back in some instances, then maybe it's a pound and a half, maybe it's one pound. Um, and know that is difficult, that adjustment is difficult, especially for people who have, who have children, yes. right, or other dependents. But the fact is, I think the most immediate response is an adjustment in your lifestyle. Hold mm -hmm. that thought for me. I'm at break. Let's go to break. We'll come back with more questions from you. Remember our text and WhatsApp line. It's 3810072. That's 876-381-0072. Soon come. social media platforms. Jamaicans are feeling the financial fallout from COVID-19. Right in my pocket week right now. Who gonna compensate us for some of the losses? The government is responding. We care and help is on the way. But just who will benefit from this help? Join us for COVID-19 and the economy on Monday, March 30 at 8.30 p.m. Send your questions to 876-381-0072 or at Television Jam on Twitter or Television Jamaica on Facebook. That's cool. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap. 19 and the Economy, a digital town hall, Monday, March 30. In terms of our clientele, we can see where our sale is more, is like more than half our, our clients are not showing up. That impacts our business in a very negative way. But I think one day we will we'll pull through it and we have to make a comeback. Thank you so much for staying with us for this RGR Gleaner Group virtual town hall. We take questions from you 
for our guest in studio. Our number is 3810072 for text and WhatsApp. And you heard there from a barber and a hairdresser. We've been speaking to a number of them over the past week or so. And all of them have been saying the same thing. Business is down. I spoke mm -hmm. to a barber a couple of days ago. He said, Dion, are you call? I wake me up. I sleep me they sleep from morning. Not once morning in a shop. All right. So what do they do? Alison Perry. You know, now is the time as well to look at your family. Some of us live alone. If you've lost your job, time to go back home and start to pool your resources together. Also, let's not forget, in times of crisis, it's time for innovation. Maybe now is the time to employ yourself. Start to look to see what are things that you could do to supplement your income mm -hmm. that could, be, could employ yourself. The fact that you've lost a job means that you may not be useful to somebody, but you're useful to yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's time to look to say, all right, maybe there's something I can do online. Maybe there's some other skill set. Really start to look. Jamaicans are very innovative. We're very entrepreneurial. So if you've lost your job, the first thing as you, know, you, you cut your expenses, you start to look to see how you can pool your resources. But more importantly, start to look to see what are you going to do when the economy turns and even in the interim, because we don't know how long this is going to be. Mm -hmm. What can you do to earn some money? Because people still have needs for various items in the economy. How do you then provide for that? How do you, people are, you know, they're, they're, they can still pay you online. So now is the time, I think, to spend some time, do some online courses, probably retool in some other area that you could make money as soon as the economy comes back or no. Might that not be costing you though at a time when you... No, lots of free things online. Okay. One of the things that um, Jamaica needs to realize in the digital economy, when you go online, you know, you, you may be cutting your expenses, but now is not the time to come off. Your, your internet. I would love to see free internet in Jamaica mm -hmm. because as a developing country, how we can get the edge. You know, we were talking about this earlier. Mm -hmm. In this time, this is how Jamaica can leapfrog mm -hmm. a, a, you know, and, and take our economy and take our country Different forward. Level, yeah. We need to start to think differently. We're always viewed as liquor, but with Talawa, we, we never think small. So no, even though you're unemployed and you're saying, oh, you know, but I need money for that. There are online courses that could get you all kinds of things. You can also start to look to see what are other people overseas doing that we could do in mm -hmm. Jamaica better. Mm -hmm. What does Jamaica offer? You know, we're on the equator. We don't need to buy a coat. We don't need to have cold air. Mm -hmm. We need to start to look at the country land. I keep joking that I'm going to grow some Lucy Yam and bring back the, you know, the country in me. But I'm deadly serious. If I can't employ myself, I need to feed myself, feed my neighbors. I need to start to become much more innovative. And we need to cut that import bill. Let me bring yeah. in Mr. Plummer. No, um, it's, it's an interesting point that you made about the barber. I, 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 have, I spoke to my barber on the weekend. In fact, I, I went to him for the first time in about four weeks. So I almost looked like Dr. Knife. <laughs> the, the, the truth is, um, I, 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 I reached out to him because of a WhatsApp message that he sent out. And the uh, WhatsApp right. message was just See? basically saying, hey, I have sanitized my, my, my space. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just putting it in a nutshell. That's essentially what he was saying. The, the point I'm making is that, you know, we have to be innovative. As small business persons, this is the time when you know you're going to reach out to your clients. In the case of the barber that I just mentioned, he was not getting any clients coming in because everybody is fearful, right? But he made an adjustment, and the adjustment was to say to his clientele, I have ensured that my space is sanitized. I am following the minister's orders, so only one of you per time. So he has, he has reached out to his clientele and said, these are the measures that I've put in place. Now, that's a simple example of how somebody can adjust. Now, mm -hmm. it may not mean that he returns to his clientele of 100 per week, but he may just get to 20 or 50 to or even him, 10 to just to keep him going. Let, let me but, put this another, let me go to another question. We're getting quite a few I'm trying to get in. Dr. Knife, let me put this one to you. I'm a carpenter, says this viewer. I used to get steady work. I've got none for the last three weeks. What can I do to survive? Again, that's a really difficult. How do you innovate? Because again, if you're in carpentry and it's not working out, what else are you going to do? There must be something else that you can actually look at, you know? Um, so for example, now you usually just build like furniture for people of them houses. School is on a break, but school will reopen. 
is there somewhere you can get yourself involved in that kind of thing of supplying services to the, the public institutions in terms of reproducing or repairing their equipment? There are things that can be done. Your tools can also be used to do other things as well. But I think one of the things that the, the smaller business people have to start looking at is not about the customers coming to them, but they're actually going to those customers mm -hmm. as well. The carpenter might not work there, but for example, your barber, your barber, you don't have to come to the barber shop anymore. Now. You might actually be able to provide a mobile service where it comes to your house and, and do those things as well, because you don't have the same kind of, of constraint. So a lot of the things have to be like what we call service innovation. Look at what they're doing and see where it is required and how can you get that service to the consumers against the consumer coming to your, to your area. And also some of that start happening. People doing a lot of deliveries now for food. You know, you go online and you order your stuff and people carry them in terms of the fresh food. Innovation. You know, it might not necessarily work. In my communities, like where I grow, like an honored garden, but yeah. a man might have a cart going around now with the food. So you're carrying the service to the consumer as against the, 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 mm -hmm. the consumer coming to you for mm -hmm. the, yeah. the service or yeah. the good. Dion, I think, I think we need to also think outside of the box. Using the same example, I know a lot of our small business persons will be challenged. We saw a clip there of the farmer who has all his produce just lying in the field because the hotel is shut down, right? Um, as Dr. Nye said, why not start, you know, providing some of that food to our infirmaries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. The carpenter, he could probably go and assist um, a, a community with the community center or whatever, and the farmers in turn give him some food. That, that's kind of bar bartering thing, you know, the whole traditional things, community sharing that we used to have in place in times of low. So you're working supply. not for cash, maybe, but for R food. Right. Because right. food is you want money to buy food. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So you're right. getting... Exactly. Have a, have a question Use another here. currency. Mm -hmm. what I have you a have? question here. I think Mr. Plummer is the only one who can answer this one. This is from Kim. Is there anything being put in place for people who have surgical insurance that <laughs> plans don't lapse at this time? Actually, yes. Um, and I speak for... Sajikor, of course, but I know the other financial institutions are also trying to put measures in place. Um, there's a private sector-led initiative of which, you know, the financial companies. For example, one of the things that I know would have done would have extended what we call the grace period mm -hmm. for you to pay your premium. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, uh, if you didn't pay your premium within 90 days, mm -hmm. then your policy will no longer be in force, right? But we would have extended that. 120 days. We have, for example, persons with our health insurance plans who, if they have critical illnesses, then their medication would have been available for, let's say, uh, 30 days or 60 days, would have extended that by a further 30 days. So there are these measures that, you know, on, certainly on the insurance side, we have put in place. Similarly, on the banking side, uh, adjustments would have also been made. We know of the waiving of fees, for example, in some instances, we know that some clients have been able to go and talk to their, their bank representative and get an extension on their loan payments where we're available or even get uh, additional financing if possible, if there is an opportunity uh, that they like to take. And, you know, Dion, this is, this is a time when, you know, our, our, our actions catch up with us because certainly people who would have displayed good credit Patterns are the ones, yeah. who, are are the ones who are, you know, who are able to easily access these things. So, you know, we, we, we need to just do the right things. I want to... Hey, I sorry, let me just jump in because yeah. this is a related follow-up question from Jeremy, who says a lot of banks have, um, are allowing one-month moratoriums in the likely event, though, that this crisis continues yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Do the banks have the ability mm -hmm. and the capital reserves to extend these benefits? All right. That will vary from institution to institution. But two things I will say. One, I, I think the first initiative is to allow this one-month moratorium. None of us sitting here knows how long this thing is going to last. So I think as a first step, the financial institutions have said, let's do this. And of course, we continue to assess the situation. The big bank, uh, which is the Bank of Jamaica, has come out publicly. Governor Baez has said that he is prepared to provide the system, which is, includes all the financial institutions, at least the deposit taking financial institutions, your banks, your credit unions, etc. He's willing to provide them with the Jamaica dollar liquidity to support mm -hmm. additional measures should it, our clients or our economy need it. So I think that is something that should give the entire population some amount of confidence. Okay, and to emphasize what you're saying, you're speaking for Sajikor, but you're saying um, the financial institutions across the board 
are uh, discussing and implementing similar measures? They're of one accord, yes, okay. as far as I'm aware. You know, I also think if you can pay, do it. Because sometimes people take advantage yeah. of moratorium. And now we have to, you know, we tend to want to beat up on big businesses, but they're going to be feeling the pinch. So my advice as well is if you're not laid off, if you have the financial wherewithal, pay your bills because it may go a long way to help the financial institutions or help small mm -hmm. businesses extend a helping hand to others. You know, as a, you see, a crisis, though, it really shows you that one hand can't clap it you know? mm -hmm. Because the reality is the bank is not doing it because of altruism. It because it makes business sense as Correct. well. If you don't have no customers, you don't have no business. Correct. So you one and wash the other. You know, and I so and I, and I kinda of like this because you no, know, it kinda of bring in a kind of conscience to the to the to the capital that is that is out there. We don't want when this crisis is done, we're going back to our old mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, if if we really can develop a program that centralizes the customer in the program itself, it is going to create customer loyalty as going to the long run to make your business better. So in a sense, this crisis here is like, is almost like a kind of blessing because we are going to embrace our own Jamaicanness, yeah. where we know that sharing and caring actually makes it better for everybody else, yeah. you know? And we put those into policies and systems and structures mm -hmm. that work mm -hmm. because we are going to get out of this, you know? Yeah. And, 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 you know, our discussions, we're actually sort of thinking that Jamaica might end up being on a, on a serious trajectory become a first world country if we do the things that we are supposed yeah. to do at this point in mm -hmm. time to respond to the problem that mm -hmm. we now face is because mm -hmm. it's not like these are new things coming up. If you look at a lot of research, a lot of these recommendations have been made before, but in terms of just procrastinating, in terms of implementing. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the minister was here speaking, I looked at this package, and I'm thinking about the MSME policy and what the MSME policy, the revised policy, what, what the recommendations, and I'm saying that he's doing things that the policy suggests that we should do, but we don't even mention of the policy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we didn't writing, you know, what the policy recommended. Mm -hmm. And it was done from 2017. But we're not making the, the, the clear the connection so yeah. people can recognize that this is being guided by something that yeah. exists. Mm -hmm. An overarching strategy. Exactly. Got you. Hold, hold, a, hold a thought for yes. me. I'll come back, but I do have to go to another break. Just to remind you, viewers, that you can text and WhatsApp your questions to 3810072. That's 3810072. We continue to talk about COVID-19, getting beyond the COVID-19, surviving this economically and financially. We're back in a moment. Live on TVJ, JNN, OneSpotMedia.com, Radio Jamaica 94 FM, Power 106 FM, The Gleaner Online, and all TVJ social media platforms. Jamaicans are feeling the financial fallout from COVID-19. Right in my pocket week right now. Who gonna compensate us for some of the losses? The government is responding. We care and help is on the way. But just who will benefit from this help? Join us for COVID-19 and the economy on Monday, March 30 at 8.30 p.m. Send your questions to 876-381-0072 or at Television Jam on Twitter. It will Twitter. be very, very hard, but we still have to just try and cope. I see what we can, what help we can get. But we still have to cope, but we don't want the spread of this disease. We cannot even pay my bills. Touch with nothing now go on. Now I get to sell anything by, because by 2 o'clock we have to pack up and go home. So nothing really is going now. Sometimes not even lunch we can buy. Thank you so much for staying with us as our RGR Gleaner Group Town Hall meeting, our virtual Town Hall meeting, continues with talking about surviving COVID-19 economically and financially. And we're hearing clips there from vendors who are saying how difficult it's been. School, of course, no out mm -hmm. unexpectedly for them. Many of them, that's how they survive, selling to school children. How do they get through? Mm -hmm. um, Alison. 
Well, I was about to say before the break that we need some financial literacy training. Our children, our higglers, our vendors, we need to understand how to manage our money because you know, if we don't learn know how to do it in a crisis, when we're out of it, we're not going to be much better off. Mm -hmm. So if you are supplying food to a school, you may want to do the same thing with regards to going to your customers. What about the children's parents that were buying there within your community? If you have a stock of goods, now is the time to perhaps use a hand cart, mm -hmm. work with a hand cart person to sell your things in a different way. However, whether you are a vendor, a, a you know, school-aged child, or a big business, we need to get back to our financial literacy training. We need to understand how to manage our money. We need to have some delayed gratification mm -hmm. to save. Mm -hmm. Because if more of us were saving, if this came upon us, we should use that lesson when we come out of it to start to ensure that we put aside a little bit of money. No, for poor people, it's very difficult and it's yeah. feisty to say to somebody who mm -hmm. barely can make ends meet that they must, must save. save yeah. But my plan would be try to get some financial literacy, learn a little bit more how to make more of your money and reduce some of the consumption that you have and look at different ways to get your sweeties, your sock sock, or whatever you are selling to different people because mm -hmm. the kids are home. And I'm still eat. And they still they eat. They must have eat more now. I'm the woman the same. Oh, jeez. Don't let the parents, start. The parents are already complaining. <laughs> um, let, let me just say big up to Dallas, who says he's watching and enjoying on Skype. Thank you so much. We, appre we appreciate that. Let me, Sharon has a question, an interesting question. Well, she was asking about benefits, but for non-profit groups. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, so it's one thing in terms of the government assistance, but she's mentioning, for instance, a camping organization struggling to pay full-time staff, Contract kitchen and housekeeping staff been without work since March as a retreat business has died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, like dried up. Persons in the social sector have always had challenges. But you know, the reality is, though, I really don't think there's a shortage of funding out there. That's always been the case. Now, for example, I was just saying that Environmental Foundation of Jamaica now have a couple of proposals out. They're looking a lot at climate smart agriculture and water harvesting and all those things. They're giving each community of access to six million dollars under the call for proposals. So I was thinking now that the minister himself needs to start look at what funding is out there in that social sector area. Digital Foundation is going to have an next call out in April. I suspect that JC for a number of the institutions will have that call for proposals as well. So what is facing a lot of the NGOs now, they are always facing it, but they just don't get the proposals in. Sometimes they don't have the capacity to yes, put together the proposal. proposal. But that's where your network come in, and that's where places like the universities come in. I mean, if you're located in Kingston and St. Andre, you have UWI and UTEC. If you're in Central Jamaica, you have NCU. If you're in Western Jamaica, you have UWI and UTEC down that side. Plus, you have Universal Caribbean here. So connect with those institutions so they could help you to write these proposals, you know? So mm. let, let me just get specific. So for instance, for Sharon's non-profit, she says a camping organization, whatever. So whatever kind of non-profit you are, you're saying you might need to tweak your Not project. necessarily tweak it, but find the, the, the institutions that support these things. For example, now, culture, health, art, sports, education, that is Chase. Chase. Yeah. Now, what is her mandate? If her mandate as an institution, her core mission surrounds sports or arts, then you can go to a, a chase. If your mandate falls within a JSIF, you go to, because they still have the funding, so money is actually out there. If I think your biggest challenge now might be, given that we do have a lot, we can do a lot of movements, etc., etc., is it that your staff will still be coming to work? This is a different kind of scenario. But you're saying that they need access to resources. I mean, Sajikwa Foundation, um, NCBA foundations, Lascar foundation, all those places are foundations. What I think is that a lot of the people in the social sector really don't understand the space that they are in and know where those resources are. So and the education element them. now becomes crucial. Right. But I think that the minister though, um, him kind of lose out on that opportunity of saying to people that, okay, we are putting aside this amount of money, but we know that this exists as well. And how can we yeah. coordinate these things to support what our ultimate agenda actually is. And let me just make this final point because some farmers in Manchester say that I need to speak Th to you. 30 him. seconds because we're running out of The 200 million dollar is not enough, the farmers say. 200 yes. million, 250,000 farmers, that is 800,000, 800 dollars per capita if we're looking at it in that kind of way. You need to support the sector more. If it's agriculture, it's going to be the basis for our advancement. 
200 million can work. All we right, need about fin 2 billion. Final question, and I'd love each of you to comment on this. Um, please ask about starting a business at this time. How feasible is it? <laughs> and, and what kind of businesses are most recession proof? And I'm nearly out of time. I have about three minutes. So that's about a minute each. So but let me start with you, Mr. Plummer. All right. So, Dion, that's, 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 I like how that person is thinking. Every yes. crisis yields mm -hmm. opportunity, right? Airbnb, Uber, those two companies in particular, Pinterest, all of these companies were started during times of crisis. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think Alison mentioned earlier that individuals right now, one of the things that they should be doing is thinking about research, researching, just going online and finding different opportunities, different skill sets that they may have that they want to just hone these skill sets, build on these skill sets and, and, and look for the and look out for the opportunities. So Certainly, would you say start now or do the groundwork and wait? I would say do the groundwork now in preparation for. But even amidst the crisis, there might be one or two opportunities. For example, we've seen uh, where, for example, big chain, Burger King, they've started a delivery service. All right. right? I, Alison. I agree that you need to, if you don't have a good business plan, if you don't have a plan, plan to fail. So I think <laughs> now is the time where, you know, get rid of the WhatsApp noise because everybody's sending memes focus on your business plan and more importantly look to see what it is that you're coming what you're going to do because all of us want to be entrepreneurs is it what you're going to do useful and can withstand this online learning jamaicans love to learn globally they love to learn so if i was going to do a business you know other than my consulting because i did start my own firm recently i would go into online teaching because mm -hmm. you, no matter where you are, once you have electricity and you have internet, it so it's a show. Assuming, of course, you have the expertise. Yeah. Agriculture. Final minute to you. Yeah, man. Okay. Agriculture is anything related to distribution because people need to get things to the, cons the consumers now. So if you can go into distribution, get into distribution. Especially you know that you know that oil prices is supposed to fall, so actually transportation costs should also decrease. But agriculture, in particular, is a key area. But food it makes security. no sense to grow the food as you can get it to. Yes, the consumer. So it have to be hand in hand. Okay. All right. We're going to have to leave it there. Thanks, our, thanks so much to our guests for being with us. We had earlier the finance minister. Thanks to him as well. And of course, thanks to you for watching. We always appreciate it. On behalf of the entire news and production team here for this RGR Glida Group Town Hall meeting, virtual Town Hall meeting, I'm Dion Jacks. Well, I enjoy the rest of your evening. Jamaica on Facebook. That's COVID-19 and the economy, a digital town hall, Monday, March 30 at 8.30 p.m. Live on TVJ, JNN, OneSpotMedia.com, Radio Jamaica 94 FM, Power 106 FM, The Gleaner Online and all TVJ social media platforms.